morning show that stands up and gives you a voice. The John Justice Show. On 1041 The Truth, Tucson News Talk FM. Nine oh seven. Welcome back to the John Justice Show for a Monday. Seven five one one zero four one is the phone number. Joining us in studio once again, Arizona Senator John McCain. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, John. And I was uh, on my ride over was listening to your interviews with Ruth McClung and Jonathan Payton, two people that I think are very well qualified to serve the country and I would look forward to serving frankly in the United States Congress with both of them. Well, and you know, I don't know if that's good or bad for them, but <laughs> they are both uh, Jonathan's service to the country, his service in the legislature and uh, you know, I always have kind of a thing for Iraq war veterans, people who are willing to serve and Ruth McClung, I think uh, I I I heard her very I thought she was very articulate. Well, she's come. A, we we were talking about this off air. She's come a long way since since uh, since when she first uh, started um, uh, in this, and she started really early on. I mean, well over a, well over a year ago um, in this run, and it'll be really interesting to see what shakes out tomorrow. And if she if she wins, you know, what kind of opposition she'll put up against Grijalva? Because I mean, that's a you know the the CD eight race is is one thing. You know, the the CD seven race in Raul Grijalva is something completely different, and it'll be really interesting once we get past tomorrow to. See see what shakes out in that race because he needs he needs to go <laughs> he needs to yeah. go in a big big way but uh, you know I, and i don't um, m- mean to interfere in that race sure but the fact is that anybody who wants to boycott our own state i, I don't get that i am offended by it that somebody who wants to harm the economy of our own state that claims to be standing up for the 30 percent of our population that is hispanic who's being hurt here Mm -hmm. every citizen of our state hispanic and non-hispanics this this boycott idea is one of the i mean I, i respect people's positions but when they take positions that hurt our economy and jobs and people that are struggling right now i don't get that i don't get it and, uh, and why Congressman Grijalva did that is 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 beyond belief to me. Seven five one one zero four one's the uh, phone number. We're going to go right to the phones. Good. People want to talk to you. First, we will talk with uh, Edwin. Good morning, Edwin. Welcome to the John Justice Show, and you're on with John McCain. Uh, good morning, John. Thank you for uh, letting me uh, speak with uh, Senator John McCain. I got a question for you, sir. Uh, on the past. You being uh, fighting and try to do um, well, you've been fighting really hard to try to get amnesty oh, for, really? uh, for uh, illegal immigrant with uh, Kennedy. Now he's dead, but, but when he was alive, you was pushing it hard, and now you try to elect it again. And I see you're advertising when you say protect the border and. Uh, no amnesty, but I, I don't understand. Is that kind of kind of doing a promotion to get yourself in again at the at the uh, reelected or or we, we, you know what you may uh, you already made me confuse how your personality, who you are, and what side you are now because uh, I, we want to make sure the people we vote vote for is the people that have one mind. And that's what they're gonna do. They're not gonna play in game in both sides. And you look that way, sir. Well, thank you, Edwin. Thanks for the call. And uh, I've always opposed amnesty. Amnesty means no penalty, obviously. And uh, in the last uh, three years to four years, I have said we have to secure the borders first. I'm sure you may have heard even the news this morning about continued violence uh, just across the border in, uh, in, in Texas, right? And te- across from Texas, bullets flying, people being murdered, uh, 28,000 people. Uh, Mexican people murdered in the last three years, the Monterey, Mexico, the mayor. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. The violence level on the other side of the border with the drug cartels has spilled over onto our side. It, it mandates for the safety and security of our citizens in all of our state, but particularly in the southern part of our state, that we secure the border. John Kyle and I have a 10-point plan. We can get that border secured, and once we do that, then we'd like to look at the other aspects of the issue. But we can't 
we can't go any further with this kind of level of violence without uh, getting our border secured for the safety and security of the brave men and women in our border patrol and our down there, but also the citizens. Why should, why should citizens in the southern part of our state have our government post warnings that their safety is imperiled in drug smuggling and human smuggling going on? I mean, so we'll get the border secured first, Edwin, and thank you for the call. You know, when it, when it, when it comes back, and, and it, it constantly comes mm-hmm. back up to that, to that McCain-Kennedy bill. Oh, yeah. um, is that something that now, um, in, in the form it was then, do you think that's something that now would be viable, or would it have to be something different now, in your opinion? Well, I think it would have to be tougher in some ways, because we are finding that more and more people who are crossing our border, have, uh, according to Sheriff Larry Deaver, Deaver down in Cochise County, and according to Paul Babu, 17% of the people we're apprehending have already committed serious crimes in the United States. And we have to proceed on the premise that although a number of these people are very good, fine, decent people, they did violate our law when they came across the border illegally. But there are a number of people who, who, as I say, 17%, according to Sheriff Larry Deaver, that's a pretty big number when you're talking about apprehending 241,000 last year. And, and again, um, we've had to close our consulate in uh, Juarez, uh, Ciudad Juarez, right across the border, the Texas border, because of the threat to the lives of our citizens. This is a existential struggle between the Mexican government and uh, the drug cartels and the human smugglers. And now they're one. You saw the... And uh, one other point here, John, very quickly. Where are the human rights activists? There was an article yesterday or the day before about 2,000 bodies have been discovered in the desert near Tucson Mm -hmm. uh, in the last decade. 2,000 dead people died in the desert. Where's the human rights advocates who, 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 who are saying, look, they should be saying, let's secure this border yeah. so the people who come to this country come legally and they're not going to die in the desert deserted by some coyote. You see? Yeah, no, that's something yeah. that we've said on the show all along is that the open border activists and those that are talk about these human rights all the time, if they really wanted and if they really, in my opinion, if they really cared about the plight of the illegal alien or illegal immigrant, whatever they want, what terminology they want to use, if they really cared about it, they would be on the side of those that want to see the border secure because that's the only way you're going to be able to stop that influx and uh, keep those individuals from the ability to make that choice to come uh, illegally into the country. Yeah, and the drop houses where they're kept in and unspeakable conditions the uh, holding for ransom mm-hmm. the i mean this whole situation argues if you care about human rights help us get the border secure let's go back to the phones and we will talk with john good morning john uh, welcome to the john justice show and you're on with arizona senator john mccain good morning sir good morning senator good morning john um, how you doing fine Good. Thanks. Um, I've got kind of an off-the-topic uh, question for you. I've been writing to you for the last two years or so, and I've never got an answer. Do you have any interest in the lost Dutchman mine and the superstitions? Uh, I have I have an interest in it. It's a rich part of uh, the history of the state of Arizona. I think it's uh, one of the great chapters of everybody who's gone there to look for the lost Dutchman's mine. I've been out in that area myself and it is now as you know turned into an area of preservation i take it that you want to go out there and and dig is that right john no um i just want to know if you're interested in the location of the mine i've already been to it oh, and, uh, I, and i can show you the tunnel where it is also but it's caved in right now well john i i know that the 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 uh, that the government would the federal government would be very interested and I'm interested too. Um, well, this is way over. What in the world is a retalk? I have no. I've never heard of this before. The Lost Dutchman's <laughs> Mine. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a story. I'm like, what in the? I have no. This uh, sounds weird to me. In the in the, <laughs> John, correct me if I'm wrong. It was in the late 1800s that a. Uh, uh, some people came out from the east and were supposed to have found the mine, and then they were either murdered or disappeared. Okay. And then 
ever since then, there has been, there was a Dutchman, I, I take it back, there was a Dutchman that was mining, and he would come into Phoenix all the time, uh, for, uh, uh, from time to time, and trade gold for his okay. supplies and stocks that he needed. And people would follow him, and they never could follow him to where his mine was. Well, he died, and the uh, supposedly he left a map. There's a brisk uh, sale in maps that goes on all the time. Wow. And they've been looking for it ever since. Uh, a few Apparently years ago, we turned the area into a, uh, a, was it John National Monument or preservation preservation area uh -huh. so that you can't go out there and dig anymore? John, did I distort history? Uh, tell he's, tell he's, us. He's off the, he's off the line oh. already. <laughs> I know. Oh. But look, it's a great story yeah, about well, the Lost Dutchman's Mind. I'm fascinated people, now. I... People were going out there f all <laughs> through the the 20th century. Well, maybe we could solve the Arizona budget crisis if we could find it, apparently. I don't know. There's a lot of gold But, there. John, you get me that info, yeah. I'd be glad to know it. It's probably uh, state or federal land now, and I think that they'd be interested. That, that would be a way to balance the state's budget. That's the strangest thing ever. All right, mm. uh, let's go ahead. On that, we have a lot of people that want to talk to uh, Senator McCain. Let's go ahead and take a break. Maybe I'll find out a little bit more about the Lost Dutchman Vine. <laughs> more with John McCain coming up next on the John Justice Show. It's 1041 The Truth. Nine twenty-three. Welcome back to the John Justice Show. Seven five one one zero four one is the phone number. Arizona Senator John McCain joins us in the studio. I want to get right back to the phone calls, and we will go to Ken. Good morning, Ken. Uh, thanks for holding on. Welcome to the John Justice Show, and you were on with Senator McCain. Hey Ken, you ever Hi, been to the? McCain. Ever been out towards the Lost Dutchman's gold mine, Ken? Uh, no, I haven't quite found that yet. <laughs> First thing I'd like to do is say welcome home. I'm a Vietnam veteran, also. Thanks, so Ken. I wanted to thank you for your service as well and everything that you went through. Thanks for serving, Ken. Mm -hmm. Question that I do have for you is in regards to the Constitutional Amendment 14. Yeah. Door for immigration. This allows illegal immigration to be rewarded. No other country allows this sort of automatic citizenship other than the United States. Canada revoked this statute within their constitution because it was just so unreasonable. The original intent of why this was put in place no longer exists. Wouldn't it be practical to change this amendment and work on our existing illegal immigration at the same time by passing a revocation of the 14th Amendment, we can honestly come up with a bipartisan agreement to deal with the illegal immigrants that are in this country and, and put, you know, uh, put bars on the door of being, you know, of all the new Go ahead, Senator McCain. Uh, uh, Ken, thanks for the call. Uh, my understanding is that there's 31 countries that have uh, the same kind of uh, uh, of illegal immigrant birth uh, issue uh, determination as you do. Look, it takes a long time to to amend the Constitution. It is a long, drawn-out process. Uh, I, uh, I, I think that the Constitution, before we amend it, we have to have the strong reason for doing so. We can solve this problem by getting our border secured. If we secure our borders, we don't have people coming across our border illegally to have children. So I, I know that with John Kyle's and my 10-point plan implemented, we can get the border secured pretty quick. And by the way, we were able to sort of force the Democrats into about a $600 million uh, improvement just before we, uh, addition of funding for border security just before we went out of session. But uh, I, my, my focus is to secure the borders. Uh, before I'm ready to amend the Constitution, I have to examine all of the aspects of it very, very seriously. And our founding fathers felt the same way because of the difficulty that is entailed with amending the Constitution of the United States. I want to get the border secure first, Ken. Thank you. Let's go and talk with Keith. Good morning, Keith. Welcome to the John Justice Show, and you're on with uh, Senator John McCain. Morning, gentlemen. Uh, I've only been in Tucson for 12 years, 10 of which I was a deep desert land surveyor. And, John, I've been watching your voting record for a very long time. 
My problem is you have competition this time and serious competition because of that voting record. You have supported what I call the Communist Democrat Party, and you have worked with them hand in hand. What do you think of the chance that you just basically need to retire because you are totally out of sync with the people out here and how we read the Constitution. What do you think? Well, Keith, I think that I'm going to ask our voters and our viewers and our listeners uh, to look at the uh, organizations who give objective grades to members of Congress. I'm a proud Ronald Reagan conservative. That's why I've been endorsed by Arizona Right to Life, by the Chamber of Commerce, by the Citizens Against Government Waste, by the John Kyle and I received the National Taxpayers Union uh, Award. Our delegate, uh, the two of us are the third highest most conservative in the in the Senate. Uh, I fought against uh, my own party and my own president when pork barrel and earmark spending uh, actually uh, caused the scandals that caused Republicans to lose uh, the majority. So if you look down any of those who watch us every single day and grade us on our performance, you'll find that they are all endorsing me and supporting me because of my advocacy for the people of Arizona, fiscal conservative and on national security issue. Um, the president's going to give a speech on Thursday about Iraq. If it hadn't been for the surge, we wouldn't have succeeded. When I supported the surge and led the fight for it, everybody said I was done. And I said at the time I would rather lose a campaign than lose a war. So I'm proud of my record, Keith, and you are certainly free to view it how you want to, but I would, be, I would urge you to go on our website and you'll see the long list of organizations that has graded me very highly in, um, including the Americans for Tax Reform, including the National Rifle Association that uh, believe that I've been an effective leader in the Senate. Thank you, Keith, for the call. Um, what do you say to uh, what do you say to individuals for, for for this campaign who who say that you've been uh, tougher in this campaign against your opponent in J.D. Hayworth than you were during the election? And people that say, well, if if he had run this kind of campaign against Obama, he probably would have won. What is your what, what do you say to those people? I'd say that I worked night and day as hard as I could and fought uh, against uh, the Obama campaign with incredible uh, effort and zeal. Um, and I don't mean to in any way describe the media, but there was a prism that the media interpreted my campaign. They're free to do that. But uh, I, I can tell you that I went after him as the most liberal voting member in the United States Senate. I said it time after time, and if they elected him, he was going to govern, govern from the left. And I accused him of that time after time, and it, unfortunately it turned out to be true. And I'm glad to have led, I'm proud to have led the fight against the stimulus package, led the fight against Obamacare, and I can think that this election is about who can be the most effective uh, for the people of Arizona in these difficult times. Senator John McCain, thanks as always for taking time out this morning. And uh, good, good luck in tomorrow's primary, sir. Yeah, could I just say Jonathan Payton is a guy who will be a strong fiscal conservative. I look forward to serving with him. Thanks. <laughs> the station where Tucson, Tucson comes to talk. 1041 The Truth, Tucson's News Talk FM.